Hi, this is Joe Bullen, and this is part two of our video teaching you about how to work with an Access Database file with Visual Basic.net. It's sort of a unique type of situation. Normally, we use SQL Server or uh, SQL uh, Express, uh, but we're going to be using the Access Database. Let's go take a look at our project, and we're going to go clean up a little bit of code, and uh, we're going to add to our program now the final touches that makes it a professional type of program. We're going to add error handling into our situation so that the user uh, has a chance to correct errors that we want to validate before the data is saved. We also don't want to try to save anything out to our access database file unless we have all our errors corrected so we want to prevent that from happening and if it does happen we want to catch those errors and let the user know that there was a problem um, perhaps give some information to the user as to what happened and then also uh, we want to add the little extra that we have to do specially for working with an access database file that we don't have to do for SQL Express or SQL Server. So let's get into our program and do a little cleanup and get going to get those final touches, make our final product. Okay, I have the uh, program up and running right at the moment and we've got it working the way we want. Let's come back into our code and take a look at it. Okay, one of the things I noticed, and I didn't catch it at the time, when I did a drag and drop uh, to the form of the countries, it created a line of code for me automatically up here. And I was so fixated on the line below that I was trying to make, I actually had it in there twice. So let me go ahead and comment out that second one. We don't need a two fills of that. And so we've got that set. We can also take the to do's out. Uh, on that, but I'll just leave it in for now. So this is the housekeeping area as things are initialized. And we brought this in uh, and filled up the uh, table. And then we looped through the table uh, to uh, fill up our combo box. Now, while I'm here, I'd like to show you a different way to deal with the combo box. That will give you a little idea of some of the things you can do in the future as you develop your coding skills. And what we're going to add to this is using a uh, link instead of filling it up through uh, looping through this process. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is come down a line here and comment what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be using link. Language Integrated Query. And what I'm going to use for this is a special uh, line of code that will fill up information for me a little bit faster. So I'm going to do a dimension of a field called items. It's an array, actually. And it's going to be equal to uh, the results that I'm going to work on here. So I'm going to take the contact. data set and I'm going to go with the countries and I'm going to do a select on that. Now what I'm going to do in the select area is enter in the information of how to get it and I'm going to enter in a function. And that function I'm just going to call foo and the foo function is going to do a direct cast cast of foo the first column to string and the type is an object type Okay, make sure I got the parentheses in there correctly. And then I'm going to cast that into an array. Okay, so there's my link statement. 
this accomplishes pretty much everything here. Then I'm going to take the combo box, the country combo box, go to its items, do an add, but I'm going to do an add range this time, and I'm going to add in the item array. Now let me change that to items over here. And we'll call that items there. Okay. Now this little statement through here does the same thing as up here. I'm going to comment that out real quickly. And let's see this link statement function. So I'm going to hit start. And if it worked correctly, it filled it up just like I did as I looped through normally. Okay, so that gives you an idea of using link in your code, which is a nice feature as we move forward in our developing skills. Now, one of the things we're going to add now is a situation where we need to deal with air catching. And here I have a situation where I'm pulling in in this line of code uh, from the database. And what I want to do is code around here a situation to catch the air. So anytime we're working with the database, we want to try to catch some of those airs. So I'm going to put a try catch in here. So there's the try statement. And if it fails, I want to catch catch the exception. And then I'm going to do something here, but I'm going to do the in try statement first on that. And what I'm going to do is if I do get an error during this process, I want to give a message back to the user on that. So what I'm going to do is message box show and what I'm going to have shown is I'm going to go out and show the get type get type and I have to convert that to string so I get the type to string then I'm going to add a couple extra lines. So I'm going to do a control cares dot new line. Add another new line. Concatenate with the amber sign. And then I'm going to get the error message. And then I'm going to uh, finish out that with uh, the title of my program uh, that I have in my title box area for the caption area at the top and I'm going to have a message box okay there's no action other than to click on it after the event and uh, I'm going to give it a um, message box error icon okay now uh, that is done in there. I'm going to clean this up and make it a little shorter. So I'm going to come after the amber sign, hit enter there, come after uh, text comma, hit enter, and shorten the message. So if I have a error occurring during this process, I'll get back a nice message. So we want to use the try catch in try around areas where we have a lot of IO activity. Let's also take a look at another place where we want to put that in. And I'm going to grab this information right here up to the uh, activity and do a copy. Let's go back into the very beginning of our code where we're getting ready to go back out and, and push data back out after we hit the save item button. Well, here's where I also want to have a try and I'll put the catch, but here I'm just going to copy what I had before. Whoops, didn't get it. Should get that again. Control C, Control V. Okay, so I've got that also right there in that event. Now we could argue that it should also be done uh, in the area where I'm reading in here. Um, it may or may not be uh, necessary through here uh, because this is the uh, loading event 
uh, where things are just beginning to occur and there's a good chance I don't even have a form available to present anything. Uh, however, we might put that in here as well as we feel a need to do that. Uh, so I've got my try catches around my database I.O. kinds of activities. Now, that takes care of uh, errors with the database itself. But let's take a look at the fact that we do not want to have errors occur uh, to begin with. In fact, we do not want to even allow ourselves to try to push data out there um, if I have um, any kind of errors in my data set. So what I'm going to do is to come up here before my try block and I'm going to code for that possibility as well. So I'm going to say if my data set data set and we'll see that it has and has errors uh, property. If it has errors, I do not want to populate uh, the, the thing. So I'm going to say then. And what I'm going to do in that situation is I'm going to give a message. And what I'm going to do is tell the user uh, change not saved data grid has errors and I'm going to add another line control to characters new line And um, then I'm going to say, please correct errors and save again. Uh, I need an amber sign in front of that, though. Okay, in the middle of that, I want to say, um, please correct errors and save again and after that statement I'm going to hit the comma put ME text in there uh, which is the title of our uh, Windows form and I'm going to say message box OK and the icon will be message box um, information on that and we're going to shorten this a little bit so right here after the amber sign I'm going to hit enter and tighten this up a little bit so it's a little easier to read when we look at the whole thing so I'm going to do that if I have errors else and what I'm going to do in the else is move this block of code I'm going to control X Put it up here between the else and the end if. Control V to paste it back in. So our logic is if I have errors, I'm going to display a message box and then I'm going to come to end if. If I don't have errors, then I'm going to initiate a error handling catch with the try, update my database. If I have errors, display a message and continue on out. So that takes care of a more robust way of handling errors around the I.O. activity of updating the database. Okay, now there are a couple other areas we want to address, and that is to also look at if I had errors on the data grid. So let me come over here, and we can come back to the designer of the grid. And I think while I'm here, I'm going to quickly highlight this. Let's center that just a little bit, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. I think I'm also going to move the grid just a little higher, make it look a little bit better. There we go. Okay, I'm going to have those save changes. And now I'm going to highlight the grid. And you'll notice if I come over here to the uh, events button, the grid has a number of things that can go wrong one of which is the data error on that and I'm going to find data error right here 
And so I'm going to create an event that if I have a data error on my grid, I'm going to handle it. Double click that. And I'm going to put my continuation underscore, wrap it, and deal with the error that I might have here. So this is an uh, area where we, where we want to look at the data grid for uh, errors that might be produced. And what I'm going to do is take the contact data grid, data grid view. I'm going to look at the rows. And I'm going to get the, uh, with this, I'll get the, uh, from the data grid events, I'll get the uh, E row. Get the row index on that. Then I'm going to get the cells. In this case, I'll get the E column index on that. And what I'm going to do is once I've got that cell, I'm going to get the value property of it. And I'm going to set the value to DB null. Dot value, and that'll clean up errors. And this is sort of a quick and dirty way to clean errors on that, but um, this is one solution that makes it pretty easy. One last thing I'm going to enter into is uh, I'm going to look at the uh, binding uh, navigation bar. Now the navigation bar has these three different icon buttons that are highlighted and enabled. And uh, I may change by coming over here to the smart GIF and changing uh, enable adding or enable editing or deleting. And these would need to be uh, changed as well. Also, if I have errors or I have a problem um, or I have no changes, there is no need for this button to be enabled if I have no changes and go through that routine if there are no changes at all. So basically, I want this button to become active if I have changes and I have no errors. So we're going to do some coding for this particular situation. And what we're going to use is a refresh of this navigational bar. So let me go back to the uh, code. And I'm going to come up here to the top where I have the navigational bar on that. And what I'm going to pick in this case is the contact binding uh, navigator. So let me get the contact binding navigator. Uh, not the save item, although I can go directly on that. I'm just going to go to the binding navigator um, um, part and for that. And then I'm going to come over here to its refresh items area refresh items and I'm going to click on that and create a new area down here and I'm going to do my underscore and hit enter to shorten the line and wrap it around okay what I'm going to do is take a look at the binding navigator add new items navigator add new items which is the button that we have and I'm going to enable that button if the value is true on that and so if I have the contact data grid view allow user to add um, add rows we will turn on that. If it's false for that, it'll turn this off. Also, for the uh, binding navigator, delete items. Here's the delete item. I'm going to enable it if the contact data grid view allow user to delete rows is available. If they are not allowed to delete, this will be false. And finally, the contact binding navigator 
save item enable button I'm going to say if I do not so I'm going to put a not in front of it to Nikki contact data set has errors so if I don't have errors I'll enable it if I have errors I'll disable it and also Uh, I want to have a situation where the I have some changes. So I'm going to look at the contact data the DB data set has changes. So if I have changes, that'll be true. And if I have no errors, that'll be true. With both being true, then I will enable that button. If either one of these is not true, this button will not be enabled. So I quickly created that little change as well. Let's run our code. And notice right off the get-go, our button is grayed out. I have no changes. I also have no errors on that. Now, uh, so if I start to have a change, for example, if I start to add in, let's say I, I modify markets. To mark it. I've made a change. Now as I tab out of that field, this value should change. As I finish that record, you'll see it change. And there it went. So it now allows that change to occur on that. I'm going to go back to the S and I can hit the save and it's uh, going to keep it back to, with the S. So this kicks on and off depending upon if there are changes or not in the data set. Okay, we've got now a very workable program. In fact, all the code that is necessary has been completed in a very short amount of code. On that, there is our code as we come in. We're going to make certain we don't have any errors, and if we have no errors, we're going to update our access database and also during the beginning I'm going to quickly load my combo box position it to the United States now if you happen to be in another country you're going to make it your own country in fact my friend will probably make it for India for his particular uh, data that he's working with and then also we come down here to uh, filling the countries up from that table here's where I uh, have air checking as well occurring uh, so if I have an error that I'm not expecting, uh, I won't uh, have an ugly looking uh, message and the program will end. It'll gracefully stop and allow me to continue on that. So we've got everything. We've got quick uh, check for errors in the data grid. And we're turning on and off the different buttons according to the settings in the situation with errors and changes. So we've got that done. So we've got error handling, but we do not have data valuation. In other words, I could have some fields that I really need to have filled in that uh, if I try to populate my database with those empty null values, it could be a problem. So let's take a look at that situation. We're going to deal with um, that by coming to the designer. Make sure I've saved everything at this point. And I'm going to go to the toolbox here. I'm going to pin the toolbox. Uh, let me get that toolbox pinned out here. And I'm going to unpin the data source. And what I'm going to do is go to a special component. And this component, in this case, is the air provider component. And if I just take the air provider component and drag it on my form, it'll drop down into my component tray. And we've got a little bug I see. It didn't uh, give the information I needed right there uh, as I clicked on it. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to do a save all. And I'm going to uh, close the solution and reopen it. Uh, I noticed this happening once before. And if I just do that, close the solution, then come back and then reopen the project on it. So I go to recent projects, reopen it. 
Now click on the air provider down below. I've got my data over here showing. And this is what I want to have happen. Now we need to have the air provider linked up to our data grid and to the binding source. In this case, it's part of that. So I'm going to come over here to data source. And I'm going to hit the uh, contact binding source. And that will take care of uh, linking up the information there uh, with that. In fact, I don't have a value for data members in this situation. So what I've done is I've associated the air provider, and I don't really need to rename this. I'll just leave it as is. And it's associated with the binding source that then is also attached to this grid. Let me do a save all at this point. Now, we've got to look for uh, and catch those errors uh, and by putting in the code necessary. And to do that, I go back to my data set database designer. So there's my data set. Now, behind this data set is actually the code that we can look at. And you'll see that I have a view code option uh, presented. Uh, on the screen right at the moment. And what I'm going to do is go to the context data um, go to the context data table right here. And now I'm going to take a view code option F7 on that and it's going to show me the code behind the scenes. And it's going to create a uh, context data set class uh, partial class and also a context data table partial class on it, which is what I want to have happen. And what I'm going to be doing is looking at things that occur in there. And what I'm going to look at is the context data table column change. So I'm going to come up here and look at the context data table events and select the event called column changed. On that, there's column changed, and it's going to create the code that I need in there. Once again, I'm going to put the underscore, hit enter, wrap it down, just to make the line a little shorter. And now I'm going to look at uh, the situation here and say if I happen to have an E column and it is a company. And you'll see company name drops in, which is what I want to check. If it's a company name, then I want to run a procedure that I'm going to create in a minute. But I'm going to call the procedure check company name. And to that, I'm going to send to it, I'm going to convert the type. And in that type, I'm going to pass to it. Um, I'm going to pass to it the E row. And it'll be of a contact row type. On that. So there I'm going to pass into it that. And the reason I've got it right now is I have not. Uh, made that routine yet. Also, I'm going to say is if else if and uh, in this case I'm going to look at E column and if my E column is a um, in this case the um, country column I got also a little air up here. Company name column on that one. If it's the country column on that, then what I want to do is do a check country uh, uh, routine that I'm going to do have a C type 
and I'm going to pass into it also ERO and contact row object on it. So I'm going to create those two on that. Now also I want to add into my class another one and that's the situation where I have um, a uh, new table. So I'm going to come back up here to the contact uh, data table on that to its events and when I add a new uh, table row table new row I also want to run a check so I'm going to bring in the same check here so I'm going to do a quick copy of that control C paste it in and I'm also going to do a country check control C and a control V to paste it in and it'll put a little extra white space around there to make it more readable and so now I'm going to do those events when I have those situations occur now let's code for the actual um, checks that we want to run so I'm going to code in a special uh, routine that I'm going to make private sub and that sub in this case is going to be the uh, check company name and into it it will receive the um, values of my val in this case it's going to receive um, the row contact as contact data table oh not data set contact row okay make certain I've got that right we're bringing in the row and it is of a contact row type okay let me finish out that line and what we're going to do then is if the row contact is company name null so if I have a null company or else um, the uh, row contact company name is equal to string empty then I've got a problem I've got to uh, set an error so I'm going to make a comment set error and what I'm going to do is go to the row contact go to the set column or I should say set column error set column error and the column error is going to be on the uh, ME company name company name company name column and I'm going to give it an error I'm going to say company name is required I'll leave the period out okay company name is required else if it's not a problem we want to turn off that so I'm going to grab this row again copy it 
pasting it after the else. But in this case, what I'm going to do is turn off the message and make it string empty. That turns off the message. So uh, at this point, this will be called from either of these two places. I'm going to decode the same thing for country. So I'm going to basically create another routine here private sub check country by val row contact as contact database set contact row and we're going to basically do the same thing that we did up here so I'm going to quickly grab this right here do a copy paste it in here change it from company to country use my IntelliSense country null yeah or cut a country name uh, country here and if that's true I want to set the country column and I'd say in this case country name is required. Otherwise, I think I'll just grab this real quick. I'll be put that in here. And that's done. Okay, so we've got our air catching, and we can add more in here if, uh, if we want to do other checks. But this will definitely make certain that I've got a field in there for uh, country, and I've got one to check for the company name. On that, we could add others, of course, and we would just follow the same pattern that we've got here. Let me do a save all and show you that in production. Okay, do a start. It'll compile and begin the run. Let me make this a little bit bigger and stretch it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and let's take this one. I'm going to do a quick copy of this field. Now, I've got it. I'm going to cut it out and then tab out. And you're going to see that since this is a required field, uh, I'll have a message come up. And there's my air provider kicking in. Put my mouse over it. It says company name required. So I know I need to correct that. So I'm going to put that back. And now the air provider message has gone away. I also did it for the country over here. So if I delete out USA, exit out, I get the same air country name as required. Okay, we've got that change. So if I add a new record, add a new record here, and I skip adding company on that, I say uh, Joe Bolin. Well, right away, we've got an error message there, and we've got also our error message over here. So we can edit for different things, not only for whether it's null or empty, but maybe we're looking for certain values. Maybe I'm only going to allow you to enter in United States into the country field or something, which maybe I wouldn't want in this particular application, but we have that ability as well. Now, we've got air providing done. And we've got air catching occurring around our I.O. Pretty well done, except for now we've got to deal with one special problem, and that's our access. We're working with access, and right now you're seeing I'm adding a new record in there. Let's go ahead and put some values in here so I don't have any errors on that. I'm going to add in the, uh, let's say, bowling computer, computers. And I'm going to say I'm the owner. And we could put in an address, 123 Main Street. And it'll make it in the town I'm in, which is Dover, Ohio. 
and I'll just uh, put in here, uh, well, I know the zip code for Dover is 44622 USA, and we'll leave the rest done, and I'm not going to deal with date of birth, I don't want to tell you how old I am. Okay, so I've got it entered in, and notice I've got a minus one out there. Uh, that's because it goes out negative, and as the database updates it, it gets a new number, normally in regular SQL Express and SQL Server. So I'm going to hit a save on this. I have no errors. I hit a save, but it did not change this number, and that's a unique problem with access. We need to fix that. So let's deal with the fix. Now, this fix I want to attribute to Beth Massey. Uh, at Microsoft Development Network, she has a video on this, so I'm not doing anything that I'm creating specially new by myself, but her solution is excellent. So what I'm going to do is add in a new class, and I'm going to come up to the project and do an add uh, item, new item, no existing item. And I'm going to go out and get that item, and I happen to have it sitting up a little bit here. I have already created this, so I'm going to come back in here to my content maintenance. And I'm going to bring in the Access ID Helper VB and add that into my project. Let's take a look at this. Now, at this point in time, you'll probably want to stop the video and take a good look at this code and copy that information in. What it's doing is... Uh, where a SQL Express and SQL uh, uh, Server automatically update the identity field, in this case the auto number field that we see in Access. Uh, Access does not do that, and we need to go out and retrieve that information. And this little helper class takes care of that. And so this goes out, gets that uh, key, updates our row in our database. Or I should say our uh, data set. So we've got this built in. And so at this point, I want to save all and get that included into the system. And I'm going to close this down because right now I don't need to see that anymore. But remember, take time, stop the video, and copy down this information. Okay. I've got that. I'm coming back to the same place I've been for the air catching on that because this is where we add... Uh, the information to activate that. So I'm going to come up to the very beginning and I'm going to add some lines above my partial class for the contact DB data set and I'm going to enter in namespace because I have to reference a special namespace for this and this is, is the contact DB data set See if our IntelliSense kicks in. Yes, it does. And this is for the table adapters on that. So I enter that in. That creates a new namespace. Then within that one, I need to enter in a partial class. Of contact table adapter. Okay, so I've got that set. You can see some of that in the detailed area over in your Solution Explorer. If you expand and show all files, you'll see what I'm going to be doing. So what I'm going to be doing at this point is adding a new sub. And I think I can come right up here and go for that. This is what I'm after. I'm looking at this adapter. And what I'm going to be wanting for this adapter is when I have a row updated event. So when I have a row updated event, that adapter uh, routine is going to kick in. Okay, we've got that in. Get a little space here to make it look good. And what I'm going to do is call that helper class. Uh, access ID helper dot set primary and what I'm passing into it is the transaction in this case it's going to be ME transaction transaction and I have to pass into it also the E parameter 
that comes up here from the uh, events. And that's it. That little line of code takes care of our uh, situation. It goes out, runs the class information in the Access ID helper over here we see, and takes care of updating it. So let me do a save all. Let's run it. Now, let's get this a little bit bigger and then once again see our screen. And I'm going to add a new record down here this time. Once again, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in Bowling uh, Computers. I'm going to put in contact name of Joe Bowling. Uh, contact type is owner. Address 123 Main Street. City Dover, uh, Ohio, 44622, USA. All the errors are gone on that. I'll finish out. My button has changed. I'm going to hit the save button. Now, while I do that, watch the record ID at this point. It updated automatically and saved. At this point, I've fix the problem that access presents to me. Uh, this is normally something we don't need to worry with, as I said, with SQL Server or SQL Express, but it is an issue with access. At this point, we've got a done program uh, on that. Uh, at this point, I could create a click once deployment of this program, include the database uh, as a data file not as a normal object so it only gets copied once and we could then deploy this to other people on that but this is a workable solution that has the air catching around it and I hope you've had fun watching me create this one um, I will have uh, the code available uh, if you need to see that uh, you might need to watch the video a couple of times uh, to appreciate the process on that but we have made a workable solution that is uh, one that we can uh, present to a user it has all the requirements that our user requested we can get the people by the country we have date of birth field which I didn't really show you but we can enter in the uh, date of birth by just typing in for example my birthday is May uh, 22 so I could hit five dot or period two two dot and then the year hit enter or tab out of it and it would fill in put my slashes in uh, for that short date type and be all set uh, so we've got a working code if you watch both videos take time to stop look at the code uh, see where uh, I cleaned up some things there's one area that I haven't cleaned up in this particular one. We brought in the uh, country's uh, binding uh, source that we did not utilize. We could delete that out of our component tray area of the, the form uh, since we didn't use it. Uh, and uh, everything would work fine without that particular binding source since we didn't utilize it. But we have everything working. I hope you've had fun watching the development of this. Hopefully you'll see some ideas and play with it. Uh, try one without the data grid. Make a detailed type maintenance program. Uh, just change the things you pull in from the data source panel and everything will drop in place and be bound uh, with the controls uh, updating automatically as you move through the binding source. So enjoy this uh, video, come back for more, and if you have any questions, leave a message out there and subscribe to my video series. Take care and keep your hands dirty. Get in the code.